Welcome back to MongoDB Local here in New York City. Come on inside the Cube. We've got a great conversation here. Peter Ulander is here. He's a CMO at MongoDB. He made all this happen. And it's, of course, with his team and Mona Chata, the Director of Category Management at AWS. Great to see you guys. What's yeah, happening? Thanks for having here. us. Man. Yeah, thanks. You guys for... both been on the Cube before. Yes. Mona, what's happening in your world? Tell us about your role. For, yeah, let's start sure. there. So yeah, so um, I head up all of our, what we call infrastructure ISVs. And so my team manages all of the um, partnerships for ISVs that fall into categories like security, networking, storage, database, data and analytics, AI ML, generative AI, um, DevOps, cloud ops. So think of, think of this as uh, a team that manages partnerships, everything except for a business application. And so MongoDB is one of our key strategic partners where uh, we've been working together for, gosh, I mean, I've been with AWS for 11 years, 11 plus years, and uh, I, can't, I can't imagine a time where I wasn't working with MongoDB. Um, so yeah, we've been uh, longtime partners and really helping to um, get ISVs to integrate to AWS services and deliver those to our end customers, our joint end customers. It wasn't that long ago, correct me if I'm wrong, that you guys merged the APN <laughs> and the ISV network and that gives you way more like scale and flywheel to use your company. Yeah, I mean, what we did was we merged our AWS marketplace into ah, the right. AWS partner network. So what that did was, you know, MongoDB has been a, um, a seller, if you will, on AWS marketplace. And what that does is it provides all of the, uh, the software and services that ISVs provide um, merged into the AWS partner network. So now it's just a broader um, partnership that spans not only co-sell with us as partners, but also all of the business that transacts through the marketplace. I was on an analyst briefing last night yeah. for Q. Yeah. And they were, they were basically describing this sort of new strategy that Amazon Web Services has for communications, which is we always get the fire hose at reInvent. And they were talking about basically more fire hoses throughout the, the year. So I saw Swami the other day, uh -huh. you know, on LinkedIn, he released some stuff, the Q announcement that we got briefed on last night. You got, so part of, I think, Swami's was the Gen AI competency launch. Yes. That was part of his fire hose. So explain what that is, and yeah. I'm dying to know what Mago yeah. thinks about it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. So um, first, let me explain sort of the con concept of what we mean by AWS uh, competencies, partner competencies. And what that essentially is, is what we found is that our partners have, you know, a very differentiated skill sets, they offer um, a variety of different solutions and they start to develop skill sets and expertise around integration with AWS services. So what we want to do is make sure that our customers were exposed to all of our different partner solutions that integrated to AWS services. And then in turn, those partners can help customers with integrations into their applications. And so the competencies span different tools, infrastructure, applications across different partners like SIs, ISVs. And so one of the other key areas that we created a competency around is around generative AI. So as we were building out our you know, generative AI services like Amazon Bedrock and Q and um, SageMaker, we wanted to ensure that customers had exposure right, to all the different partner uh, integrations associated to that. And so as a result, um, we have a variety of different integrations across multiple competencies. Within, we launched the um, generative AI competency back in March, uh, March 6th, um, early in March, and uh, MongoDB is one of the partners that is a part of our generative AI competency. And that, again, just gives us, um, you know, gives our customers that added benefit of having access to partner solutions and the key thing about these competencies is that they're vetted, right? We have a high security bar, so the customers have trust, right, in the any partner that is part of the um, competency Like program. Bongo, so you're, like you're a trusted partner. Okay, what, so what's your angle here? Yeah, no, I mean, it's exactly that. I think you, you heard Dave this morning in the keynote, he said, especially in Gen AI, 87% yeah. of executives, they, they know they need to get into Gen AI, they don't That's know right. where to start. When you look at the ecosystem technologies that are out there, you know, every week, 
hundreds of new services or solutions are coming out. So how do I know this is going to work for me? How do I know these pieces are going to work together? That's such a critical component. And so when you think about AWS with now, what do you have, 275, 300 Over services? Over 200 so, services, yes. When you, when you think about just their own ecosystem of stuff, how do you know when I choose MongoDB that it's going to work with Bedrock, that it's going to work with Q, that it's the integrations are going to be there to remove the friction and enable me to move quickly? The competency becomes kind of that badge of trust, support, and knowledge that you, it is it is the right way to get started um, uh, with these technologies working together. So if, if anything, you think back to the original days where, where it was nothing more than a certified partner and it was a stamp, yeah. this is taking that way further along because it comes with all of the tools, documentation, guarantees, APIs, and integrations that customers need. That integration is key, it's real engineering work. Okay, and now you also announced that your GA and Bedrock, what, what does that mean, what, what, what specifically? Well, so bed, you, you'll speak better about Bedrock than I will, um, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, Bedrock is kind of that uh, orchestration layer. You can almost call it like an AI pass. It brings together components from infrastructure, orchestration, tooling, um, et cetera, et cetera, really focused on building Gen AI apps and removing the friction and complexity in, in developers building this stuff up or operating it, right? Well, as part of building an application, you need a database, right? So MongoDB comes in, we sit with Bedrock, it, it enables us to, to have the developers use the tools for building the apps that they want to use, knowing full well that they don't have to leave that console to come to our console to integrate MongoDB. We're part of the overall orchestration unit so they can move quickly. I like the way Peter explained that because I think a lot of times AWS is misunderstood. People think LLMs equal AI. And we know, we've applied it, and, and it's just not that simple, you know, it's especially if you want to get real business value out of it. Yeah. You need all these other frameworks and tools. You know, people talk about guardrails, or what does that mean? You need security, you need to make sure the LLM's not leaking data, et cetera. So, what would you add to, to that bedrock? Yeah, yeah, no, I think, you know, in terms of that um, integration, you know, one of the key things that we heard from customers, too, is, and, and you're right, you know, AI is beyond just an LLM or a large language model. There's many layers of it, and that's why, you know, AWS has sort of constructed our approach to AI with having, you know, the infrastructure available, the compute, the chipsets, with kind of Amazon bedrock in the sort of middle layer, where, again, we want to give customers choice in terms of wi what type of foundational models they can use and integrate into their applications and be able to uh, readily use that in their real world sort of applications. So I think, you know, just, you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the integration work that we've yep. been, that we're doing together with Bet Bedrock. But, you know, I'm, you know, we're just seeing a ton of customer, um, you know, uh, feedback and the desire to say, we want, we need help getting started with generative AI and this gets us in the right direction. And we saw the big announcement, I guess it was yesterday, was the Mongo yeah. AI application program map. Yeah. Yeah, um, the, uh, Amazon is obviously part of that, yep. uh, as are a number of others. So why why should tell people why they should care about this? Why it's important, you know, for them? And then I'm interested in why it's important for MongoDB. <laughs> so so uh, uh, building on that, I mean, you're you're seeing a common thread here, right? Customers want to have the easy button to get started. They want to have the guarantees that things are working together. And the third frame of that is they want to know that it's going to be applicable to the use case of the business problem that they're trying to solve. And we saw a huge opportunity in the fact that over the last year, we've been working across various industries, retail, finance, telco, et cetera, helping them kind of get started on that AI journey. We saw specific use cases, development pa architectural patterns, and technologies that were really, really critical in helping them get, get moving quickly. So Matt brings together that rich ecosystem with validated reference designs based on the use cases they're trying to achieve and the integrations into all of the technologies that are required to go do so. Obviously, in this AI journey, hyperscalers play an, an outsized uh, role in getting customers moving and the work that Amazon's doing on, on Bedrock and, and, and Q and everything else just makes them such a critical piece of that, that, uh, that partnership. So there's synergies there. Oh, right. oh, yeah, definitely. And you know, no, just to um, you know, even further emphasize the point, customers really need prescriptive guidance, and in terms of like how to get started with AI, everyone just thinks AI is about a chatbot. It is not. Like. <laughs> it is not. And so it's way more complicated than that. And so having programs like Map, and you know, we were really excited 
to join Matt because again, we're giving customers more guidance in terms of here's how you get started, here are the use cases. And one of the things that I think marries really well into Map is also we provided our customers with an AI use case explorer to again, help them through, here are all the different ways in all the different industries that customers are using AWS services plus third party um, software, services, data, et cetera. And that really has helped sort of help cu uh, end customers navigate and get started with uh, generative AI faster. So there's ideas in there and there's also packaged solutions. Blueprints type of yeah. solutions. Blueprints and, yep. and packaged solutions. And then yep. also the uh, component of MAP is also the services piece, right? Yep. So on one side, it could be an exploratory service to say what use cases are going to be kind of the, the starting point. What's going to get me moving with the biggest impact? That level of services is really, really critical. Yeah. Or there's another one, you've decided on the use case you want. This is how we bring those blueprints, reference architectures and integrations forward so that you can move from ideation to market as fast as possible. And you mentioned marketplace before. That's been huge. Yeah. Um, I think it's really a differentiator for, for AWS and its partners. How has, have you leveraged Marketplace? What does that mean for your relationship? Oh yeah, no, Marketplace is such a critical part of the relationship we have with, with AWS. Um, you know, thinking through how customers engage, you're not just gonna be buying compute network and storage and Amazon services. Amazon has, has become kind of this hub for all types of third-party ecosystems to solve business needs. And it becomes that single point of, of presence slash billing and operations for a lot of companies that are out there. What this does is it removes the complexity of saying, not only do we know that MongoDB, Atlas, and AWS, they work together, but now you can ensure you have one bill, one engagement, one license. It just basically creates an easy wrapper so that customers can transact with these solutions together. I know we're up against the clock. You had something to add? Please. Well, I know I was just gonna add to that, you know, I wanna give Mongo just a lot of kudos here because Mongo has been one of our partners that really um, has adopted a lot of our features. And really, in, and that ranges from things like pay as you go type of um, pricing options to private offers to also adopting features like Vendor Insights. So Vendor Insights is really an easy way for our end customers to actually be able to uh, acquire document compliance documentation around HIPAA, SOC 1-2, FedRAMP. And so, you know, that is a huge value to our end customers. And I have to say MongoDB does a really amazing job of adopting the um, buyer features and capabilities so that it makes it easier for our the end customers to procure through the marketplace. So they, they get the added benefit of uh, speed of procurement, acceleration, and then the end customer gets all of everything that they need all in one spot and in however they want to uh, transact. Uh, so it's just a, it's a real benefit to our end customers. And, and MongoDB also didn't resist the cloud, knew you had to go cloud native. Atlas was a game changer for the company yeah. and, your, oh, yeah. Yeah. and your customers. And, yeah. and so my, my last, I know we're up against the clock. I want to talk about Gen AI adoption, uh -huh. what you guys are seeing, survey data that we do with our ET partners, ETR, New York based, basically shows the types of, of activities and use cases today, I'll call them very chatty. You know, they're very chat GPT-like. Yeah, yeah. And so the real interesting, harder use cases that are going to be, there's ROI today, don't get me wrong, but the big value is still not there. The big, there is examples, you guys gave some this morning, but they're not like at scale yet. So what are you guys seeing and what's your expectation for Gen AI adoption, you know, beyond some of those lighter weight applications? Yeah, I, you know, look, I think it's still very early. Um, as customers, like we just said, they need help getting started. So what I anticipate is that more and more industries are going to leverage generative AI in very unique ways. And these are industries across, you know, financial services, healthcare, retail. It's going to go beyond the chatbot. And, you know, I've, we're already seeing very innovative ways in which customers today are using generative AI and things like even figuring out how do you boost your employees' productivity, that's always a thing, but like the way, what they're doing is actually creating things like um, behavioral models. How do you sort of match up managers and how, uh, with your teams? How do you get your teams to become more efficient? So this is like psychology, yep. right? And so you're starting to see very interesting approaches, but there's gonna be more to come. I think the future really is in, the, in getting the data right, and, in sh and what you'll see is just better models better um, collection of data and weeding out all of the like data that's not good and that is not that's going to you know prevent a model from actually um, you know 
coming out with a good outcome. So I think that's going to get better. I think overall technology is going to get better. So like this is why AWS has invested in like chipsets in our technology so that models are just going to get faster, better, more reliable, more trustworthy. And as that happens, your compute power is going to have to, you know, get more powerful as well. So I think all of those things are what, what we're going to see more of. So I'm very excited and oh, I'm yeah. excited about working with Mongo. Well, we're oh, excited you guys are investing. Yes. Keep, keep, keep it up, we're keep going. We're Peter, uh, I know you got to go, but we're, we, we want to give you the last word yeah. On, yeah. on the relationship and also MongoDB.local and what's next. No, so I mean, this is the first stop across 23 cities around the globe. We're bringing, uh, you, we're bringing Gen AI to the world, helping developers get started quickly. Uh, so we're really excited about the success here in New York. Thank you again for joining us. But the ability for us to get this in the hands of the developers has been absolutely yes. key. And to the point of where we are in the Gen AI movement, it's early. It's about enablement. It's about exploration. It's about helping customers understand where to get started. There's no better way to do that than leverage these local series to get your developers in front of the experts with all of the partner ecosystem tools and technologies that you need to uh, to move forward. So that's why we're really happy about this program. Well, we're happy to do. Thank you so much for having us here. Thank, Thank you guys you. for coming on the cube. You got, now, 23 cities. You're going to be in all 23 cities. Oh. Do you have an LLM that can replicate? I know, that's right. Wouldn't that be yeah. nice? No, we need a hologram I, uh, or we, something. We actually, yeah. you know what? It's fun. We, we've uh, we've committed to our execs. We go to about four or five each, yeah. right? So we'll go out and we keynote. So it brings the execs also out into that's the field true. where our customers are. Um, and we're not allowed to do the same ones we did last year. So we've okay, got to go great. meet new folks every time. This nice. year, I, I have a tour in uh, in India and nice. uh, Southeast Asia. So it'll oh, be good. Great. Oh, awesome. fantastic. All right. Thanks okay. again, you guys. Really well, thank you so it. much. Thank you. All right. Thanks. All right. Keep watching. We'll, keep, we'll be right back right after this short break. MongoDB Local, live from New York City, watching the Cube.